I'm uh, Dr. RJ Burr. Um, I'm the owner of uh, Reach Rehab and Chiropractic Performance Center. So I'm a chiropractor by title, but many times I've been told I'm pretty much a physical therapist that knows how to adjust really well. But regardless of titles and, and other things, my goal is the reason why I've set up a, 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 um, a clinic of rehab and chiropractic and other things is that I decided that there's something missing. A lot of times when people get adjusted and it feels great, but you know what? it comes right back or it keeps coming happening over and over again or I feel like I have to keep going back all the time or you know I, like there has there has to be something else well I had that same experience I felt like there has to be more we can do to help out people than just do just some strengthening exercise or just doing some you know adjusting people so as a chiropractor yes and that's my title but I've kind of used bits and pieces from physical therapy manual therapy strength and conditioning other realms in order to really figure out first and foremost what are the answers? What does this person actually need and, and where do they need to be? Because if I can figure out right away, hey, you shouldn't be seeing me right now, I gotta refer you here and for these reasons, I wanna know right away. But if I can help them, like most people with any sort of muscle joint nerve pain problems, I wanna know what it is and how it behaves so that I can apply the right therapy to it. Because some people, I don't crack or adjust at all. Runner that is a client I see on and off, uh, other than having the issue of, you know, doesn't know how to rest. I don't know that ever happens in the running community, right? You know, running too much, right? Other than that, um, this person was having a consistent uh, back pain over and over again, right? Back pain, chiropractor kind of makes sense, right? Okay, so had been to previous chiropractors, had been to an osteopathic physician, um, had injections, um, or an injection, uh, had a couple stints of physical therapy, even went a little bit more holistic, if you want to say, alternative medicine of going toward like, I don't know, crystals, voodoo, whatever it is, doesn't matter, right? Any sort of therapy, he's trying to figure out why do I keep getting this back pain that happens? And the thing is that it's not just the back pain she's worried about, it's the fact that it's, it gets so bad it stops her from running. She's like, if this pain was just there and I could run and I could run through it and it's fine, who cares? I'm, I'm fine with that. But the problem is it gets so bad I have to stop and I'm afraid that I'm hurting myself, right? And so she does get um, benefit from adjustments, that's great, but it's one of those things where like it feels good, you leave and then it's like, oh, I go back to my run, there it is, back again, right? May get a little bit more time into the run before it happens, but it comes right back. This person needed a different strategy because we, I, I adjusted her, moved her around, tested out some different things, and I'm like, this is not a joint or a structural issue. This is more of a tissue issue. This is more of like um, overloading the muscles, and you don't know what you're doing to do that. The big thing we found with her is essentially what's happening is with her running, so she's essentially with her back, um, her run, because of what she does all day long, which is sit into, in a chair right, at work and doing all those things, she had really poor hip extension. Right, hip extension probably pretty important for running. Right, you need that in order to propel, go through the gait cycle, and all that stuff. So what was happening inadvertently is that it, her back issue was coming from her hips. It wasn't a back problem, but there's back pain. But it was being driven by her hips because we're in a state of hip flexion all day long like this. Over time, she didn't do. I mean, do you guys always like? do really good about your stretching and warm up before runs. I think we're all guilty, right? You kind of just get in, I just want to go, put the headphones in, whatever, right? And so um, she had a real issue with hip extension. So what happens is if you, when you want to propel yourself forward and you do have a lack of hip extension, what happens, right? You use your low back, right? So if my hip only, go, your hip should go up to 15 degrees of extension. If it only goes to maybe to zero or somewhere else there, how do I get farther forward, either have to use a lot of my ankle and calves and you get a lot of that calf tightness or Achilles tendonitis, or you have to use your low back, right? So why is that a problem? Go ahead and stand up. I'm going to use some really technical terms here, okay? So what we're going to do, I want you guys just to kind of get like in a golf position, like you're grabbing a five iron or something like that, all right? And then hug your shoulders, okay? Really technical. I want you to do what's called a J-Lo booty. Okay, and then now do the opposite, a plumber butt. Tuck your butt under, okay? Can you guys do that or are you kind of just having a hard time doing that? Let's cycle through a few times. We're all in it together so it's not too weird, <laughs> all right? Okay, all right, so now go into that plumber butt, take your hands and then feel those muscles on either side of your spine there, okay? They should feel relatively flat, kind of relaxed, okay? Now go and stick your butt out like that big old J-Lo booty. You don't have to shake it like me, all right? Now go ahead and rub those muscles there. What do you feel? They should be popping out, almost feel like kind of like tight like steel cables. And there should be a ravine where your spine is between there, right? So can you feel the difference between that plumber butt, the relaxed state, versus that J-Lo booty that stuck out? So if you're in that really tight position like that, when you're running and you have lack of hip extension and you have to use your back, you're essentially doing this. 
right? J-Lo booty over, 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 over again. So those tight muscles, it's kind of like doing this over and over and over again in your finger. It's going to get sore. It's going to hurt, right? So it's that repetitive loading of those muscles there over and over and over and over again, and it drives into that back pain. So what we did is we worked on hip extension. So on both sides, she had an issue of extending her hip. So as soon as we learned how to keep her center more centered and use the hip for extension and understand those principles, guess what happened? Right, what's happening over and over again? So essentially adjusting was just a Band-Aid. It's putting a Band-Aid on a wound, right? It's kind of like having a cut on your finger here, right? And it's scabbing up, right? It'll heal, but if you keep doing this, it's gonna keep opening up. The teaching her how to, how to uh, maintain position here and use her hips and not her back was essentially letting that scab heal and not just breaking it open over and over again. Make sense? I'm speaking in an analogy or metaphor, right? Okay. Cool, so to keep it short and sweet, is that I find this all the time is the reason why I'm bringing it up is a lot of this back pain that just doesn't have like, you know, it always happens when I'm running, but you know, it's this repetitive uh, pattern to it is I want to look at hip extension first and foremost. There's other things to look at. We can look above, we can look below, but it's always important with the body to understand that everything is interconnected. And, you know, something below or above can affect, can cause pain somewhere else. So just because you have knee pain doesn't mean it's a knee problem because you have plantar fasciitis doesn't mean it's actually a foot problem. I've seen plenty of times plantar fasciitis come from the hip or actually from the back itself, right? So it's really important that if you don't know what's going on and to, to work with someone that's gonna look at the entire body and understand it mechanically how that works so that they can look at and say, hey, we're inefficient here and this is the reason why this is happening here, right? Maybe the reason why your car is rattling around is because you haven't rotated your tires recently. You know what I mean? So we have to make sure that um, things are working and distributing the force evenly. Okay? So I find that all the time. So I think keep it simple. Let's work on a couple like hip extension things because everyone can use it. Because look what we're doing right now. Right? We're sitting down like this. And like a lot of us, not everyone, we have desk jobs. And so if you think about like the general, general desk job persons like every day, if, you know, Monday through Friday, right? Is it? You get up in the morning. Maybe sit in the can, right? You get up, you go and uh, go for breakfast, sit down. You get up, go in your car, sit down. You go to work, you sit down. You might get up, use the bathroom or go to lunch. But when you go to lunch, you sit down again. Then you get up and you go back to work, you sit down. You go in the car, you get the point, right? There's so much sitting that uh, when do we ever use this unless we are running or exercising? When you walk, you can get away with doing this, right? Kind of like that old man kind of look like this. You can use your hamstrings and calves. You don't need to use your glutes. You don't need to use hip extension. So we tend to lose it. If you don't use it, you lose it, right? Then other things are subjected to problems. A really stupid, simple drill you can do to drive some hip extension that doesn't take you too much time or, or no equipment, and you can do it just outside before your run. And that way you know that, hey, I'm kind of priming my hip extension before my run, so I know that I'm not compromising my back in any way. And you may not have any back pain, but it's still beneficial to do it. And even a general population, people that don't play any sports, they have a lack of hip extension, that can happen. But sometimes I may not address it because that may not be driving their problem that they have, right? You know, if someone doesn't use that, yes, it's, you want it, especially in sport, but if you don't, if that's not driving the problem, I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. I'm not gonna tell Grandma Gertrude to do, you know, some hip extension exercises when that's not the primary source of what's going on with her, right? So it has to be applied to that person and their goals because right? there's a million exercises and things you can do with someone, but it's like, what's, what's going to give you the, the, most of, the, the, the minimal effective dose, right? The least amount of effort to make the most amount of change. We don't have time. We're already busy, right? It, like, it's easy to just take, like, a here you go, do these exercises, you know? Well, can we just narrow it down to maybe one or two things to be doing that's most beneficial? Okay? But, to, but you need an assessment in order to do this, something like that. But I see it so often that it's just like, in a blanket terms, I think anyone, everyone could use it. The only other thing I'll say is mention is, um, to when we're doing this, is core. So I'm going to keep it really, really simple. Um, with the core, we're not going to talk about all the mechanics of it, but the big thing is that understanding how to keep rib cage and pelvis connected. Okay? What happens is a lot of us, we don't realize, but we're like in an open position like this. Other than putting a lot of tension in your low back, the issue with this is that we can't adequately use our diaphragm to breathe. Okay, we're all good breathers because we're alive, right? But breathing's number two function is postural stability, right? This diaphragm muscle, it creates pressure in our abdomen. This pressure, it stabilizes our spine. It essentially creates an anchor point here so our legs can pull, arms can pull, right? And when we're in a position like this, that function's not adequate. So what happens is that we have to use our structure, like our spine, and overload some muscles in order to create stability. Problem is, 
over time that can cause problems. Okay? So whenever we do any exercise like this hip extension thing we're going to do, we always want to think, can we keep this connected here?